Hello, everybody. Today is October 15th, and we are discussing Revelation chapter 9. Seems as though that as we're going through these chapters, you see the intensifying um, increase of the, of the uh, judgments that are falling. We have the description of the angel uh, in that period where the, the, the angel is crying, whoa, whoa, whoa. And uh, it's not just in reference to what judgments have already fallen, but he's looking forward uh, to the judgments to come. And it's uh, even the angels just taken back by the horror of the things that are happening. And, and interesting enough, with all these judgments coming upon the earth, which again uh, is a means by which uh, off, offering people an opportunity to make their choice between God or Satan. And uh, remarkably, the number of, pe of people here we see continue to harden their hearts and refuse uh, to yield over. It just reminds us all over again of Pharaoh in Egypt and God bringing the plagues down upon them and pressure upon it and how they uh, hardened, uh, Pharaoh hardened his heart and, uh, and, and lived in that rebellion. And, and it's hard to imagine these kind of, uh, of judgments coming upon the world and people continue to harden their heart. In this fifth trumpet here, we, the Bible describes an angel or rather a star falling from heaven to earth. We know that that is Satan, that's Lucifer. Uh, when Lucifer fell from heaven, but here is his description here that he fell. And to him, that is to Satan, is given the key to the bottomless pit. Now the pit, we understand, uh, the Bible describes a bottomless pit that has, uh, uh, contains uh, many of the demons or the fallen angels that have been reserved uh, in that. Uh, they're bound demons. And uh, they've bound, been bound there a very, very, very long time. So you can imagine now, Satan has this key. He's unlocking the pit. He's going to let all of these uh, uh, chained demons out upon the earth. And so now think of it, the accumulation of decades and thousands of years, some of these demons have been there. They're getting out, and with them, they're bringing all this fury, all this evil, all of this uh, against, uh, against the earth. Um, and so with it, uh, we, we'd have a description of locusts, that there's going to be uh, locusts coming out with the ability to sting um, and um, attack. And they're going to be the size of horses. If you can, I mean, it's hard to imagine. If you've ever been stung by a hornet, then you understand that this sting from a horse, there'll be no uh, cure for it, but for five months, there'll be an utter Tor uh, torture. And so the Bible tells us that uh, they're given power, and, uh, and so this, the angel of the bottomless pit, uh, uh, and, and it says here that there's an angel over that. Uh, the name of that angel is Destroyer. And so, um, but the description that these, uh, this tormenting, uh, that they're not going to be able to touch those who have the seal of God on their head, uh, but they will be bringing great torture upon the people of the earth. Five months, and they will try to think of ways uh, to die, and, and they can't. In fact, that's what it says up there in verse 6. In those days men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. And they just think about that. All this is happening to them, and uh, they won't be able to do anything about it. Now look down uh, in, the, uh, in, in the description of, this, of the sixth trumpet, uh, there we have uh, this army, this incredible army that's being released. There's a 200 million man army that uh, no doubt is the uh, accumulation of all these that are going to come against Israel. They're going to they're going to be coming against uh, to destroy that land. Of course, God's going to intervene, but they are going to come and they're going to kill. Uh, a third of the world, a third of the population is going to die. If you can imagine, that's, uh, that would almost be a, a two billion people that will die in this uh, with fire and smoke and brimstone, the Bible says, coming out of the mouth and out of the tail. No doubt this is a description of weapons of which John had no language to uh, describe it. You can imagine that as he's watching and experiencing the things that are going to come, that he's trying to write with what he has, language he has to describe. This no doubt sounds like um, artillery coming from modern day equipment of which he wouldn't have access to it. And so he describes it as uh, fire and smoke and brimstone coming out of the mouths and out of the tail. 
And so, uh, but uh, anyways, this devastation that's coming upon the world, and then it says in verse 20, but the rest of the world who were not killed by the plagues did not repent of the works of their hands. Now, do, you have to admit that this is unbelievable, that, that you've got these tormenting uh, stingers coming from horse, the, uh, beasts the size of a horse, or um, you know, these locusts the size of a horse with a stinger, uh, men were begging for die. They can't die. They, uh, they're, they're experiencing this uh, uh, 200 million uh, men army and uh, the, all of this that's happening. And yet the Bible says that they would not repent. They would not yield over. Um, they just cursed God. That's, uh, basically, that's what we're, we're saying here. They refused God's grace, his goodness, his kindness, his son. And, uh, and so this judgment is coming upon them. But I want you to notice something here. The church isn't around. I think that we've got to continue to reinforce this because there's some confusion. Some people who believe the church is going to be here through uh, all or part of the tribulation. Do not believe that. I believe in chapter 4, the church is taken up into an open heaven. They're robed, they're seated, they're uh, crowned, and uh, there's no more mention of the church. And so uh, uh, you and I have something we can be very thankful for, and that is that uh, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, has not only forgiven us of sin and rescued us from hell, but he comes with a reward in his hands. And there is going to be uh, that snatching away of the church, as we read and described in Revelation chapter 4. And, uh, and then those that are left behind, those uh, uh, have a choice. They'll either give their lives to Jesus or they will curse and blaspheme God. But the devastation is coming upon the face of the earth. I'm saying again, you don't want to be here. And thank God if you're a Christian, you don't have to worry about being here. But uh, I would say to you that you and I need to examine our hearts, make sure that our uh, lives are in line with the truth, that we're living for Jesus, and that we're ready. Because I believe with all my heart, Jesus is coming soon.